Well, hello once again, everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and uh, yank out the filter capacitors from the power supply in this television. And they are C1A, right there, and C1B. We're going to jerk those suckers out of there. We're going to put some new ones in. They're both located in the same aluminum can, and each one is 200 microfarads. I'm getting ready to attempt uh, solder extraction on these two contacts here on the first filter can in the power supply. And I need to get this filter can off of here because you, you see here, this, see all this brown stuff? That is leakage. That can has leaked and it's probably boric acid or something. Anyway, I've got to get this, this can off. And the best way to do it really, uh, this is just one way of, uh, you know, removing uh, the can and replacing the electrolytics. I could have just removed the wires and put a you know a terminal strip anywhere. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try out my brand new my brand new Hacko FR300. Now I've already turned it on. The switch is back here on the handle back here. When you turn it on, you press it in, then you get a little light down here at the bottom. See that little red light. Anyway, and then it just kind of. You apply a little dab of solder to the end of it right here, just like you would any other soldering iron. You want to keep your, your iron wet. Then I'm going to try to suck off the solder off this set of contacts and this set of contacts. And if it doesn't work, well, you know, there is a plan B. The first extraction on that one right there went real well. Sucked the solder right off. Let's see what I can do with this other one. It's melting real good, softening it up. I hope it works. All you gotta do is pull the trigger. Well, it's hard to tell. Let me see if I can bend this thing around where you get a better look at it. Well, it, it looks pretty darn good. It extracted it right off of there. Look at there. I ought to be able to take my pocket knife now. And just kind of bend that lead. So, with that solder all gone, I ought to be able to look at there. Look at there. She bent right off. Let me get a pair of needle nose here. All right. If I can get a hold of that thing. Now, if this thing is supposed to work, if this thing worked like it's supposed to, I ought to be able to just peel that thing right off there without any problem at all. Look at that. Look at that with that solder gone. Look at that. Was that a piece of cake or not? The same with these leads right here. I may have to do a second extraction because. This lead here covered those up, but the same situation. Holy mackerel. Well, there they are. Every one of them loose as a goose. They just, they just peeled right on the rail with no strain, no pain, no nothing. There's one wire off. I'm going to shorten up these uh, tips, by the way. They're a little bit too long. But at the factory years ago, they thought they had to go around, you know, 75 times. They don't need to. We've since discovered that. And then this one here comes out. Once you get that solder off, the thing is a piece of cake. Look at this. I can't believe it. Whoa. Look at that. That's all. Well, the can is out. And there's the hole to prove it right there. Stick my finger right through it. I think what I'm going to do, let me shed a little more light on the subject here. I, I still got a little bit of solder. I think I want to extract off from around those holes that anchor it in. But I'll extract those. What I did was heated it and then just pulled it on each side of the can up on top of the chassis until the uh, tabs slipped right out. But a lot of the solder was removed. And we're going to go ahead and open this baby up. Look at all that acid that built up in there, all that dried uh, boric. I guess it's boric acid. I assume this is a, I don't know what that could be. Boric acid maybe. Looks like a mud wasp nest to me. <laughs> Okay, we're going to go ahead and open that a different way uh, from what I'm used to doing. Normally, I cut the can, you know, all the way around, extract the inside, put the new capacitors in, put the two halves together, and use some uh, chrome exhaust tape, exhaust manifold tape, to put around it to hold it together. I'm going to try a little different way of doing it. Oh, Bob Anderson uh, TV, he went ahead and opened it up from the bottom on one of his uh, videos. I'm going to try that myself. I'll probably wind up butchering it. I don't know. He just sort of bent up the edge all the way around. 
and uh, that may have been the only way he could do it with that particular type type of can. I don't know if this can is going to be the same way or not, but we're going to try to do something uh, to make this thing look original when I put it back in. The reason I usually cut the can, you know, whenever I do a restoration, I try to think about the guy or the woman a year from now, 20 years from now, who decides to restore this uh, TV or radio or whatever it is another time, you know, a second time. And I try to do things to make it easier for that uh, hobbyist. That's why I make sure all the uh, capacitor values are facing out, not only for troubleshooting purposes, but for in the future when someone, someone else has to work on this. I'm waiting for the .01 microfarads to, uh, to come in from Just Radios. That was, that's all I have left to do is change the .01s. And all the capacitors will be changed with the exception, of course, of the electrolytics. So far, I'm giving the Hakko FR300, the, newer, the newest model, I'm giving it an A+. It's done a terrific job so far. Now, one more thing. This is good. This is an easy can, you know, to restore, to rebuild, or refurbish, or restuff, whatever you want to call it. Because there's two, both of the capacitors in that this can comprises are of the same value. They're both 200 microfarads, 200 microfarads at 250 volts. So you almost can't make a mistake on this one. Now the other can, this one right here, this is going to be a little bit of a pain because there's there's two different values in there. Sometimes you'll get a can that has four different values. You got to really be careful with but this one here's got a lot more stuff connected to the to the four different tabs where only this one only had two two tabs to mess with. Anyway, let's see what I can do. First I'm going to extract some more solder from here. And then we're going to open this baby up. There's a steel ring right here. This is the steel ring. It goes all the way around. And the aluminum can is bent over the top of the steel ring. So right there where that pencil point is, I have that's where I have to bend the lip back. Once I get the lip bent back, it'll it'll release that steel ring. You see that seam all the way around? That's where it has to be bent back first. Looks like it's going to be a piece of cake. Once I get the you know the lip started right there, once I get the, the lip started up, all I got to do is work my way around. Just just work my way around it. The ring has been removed. Now, the way I had to do this, this was not easy. I'll tell you what, it just fit down in there. What I had to do to get that lip up was, a, it took quite a while to get underneath that first part of the lip, but once I got under it, it was a matter of just taking the screwdriver and actually going from the outside here and prying up and prying up. Oh, I got a kitty cat here. He just, he, I just gave him some snackies. He says, I wanted something to eat. Okay, let me get you down now. You're going to have to go down. Let me get the kitty cat down. This is my daughter's cat. Oh, okay. Where were we? <laughs> anyway, I had to pry up. Oh, he's back again. And pry and pry. This reminds me of Daniel's cat. Oh, cool blue lights. But anyway, once I got the lip pried up all the way around, I took a pair of my uh, duckbill pliers and bent the lip back. And now we're ready to to remove the insides and what I'm going to do is heat it real hot. I'm going to take my little old vice grips and put on it like this. And then once it gets really really hot with my heat gun, this little heat gun right here, I'm just going to get it real hot and get the cat out of the way first. Then I'm going to just pull and hopefully it'll the entire thing will pull out of the center. It should anyway. We'll see. Well, I had to move the, this operation inside the house to keep that cat from being burned. He kept wanting to get up there and get near this can that I was heating up. That's working out okay, though. I managed to get this little uh, initial disc out that has the two soldering tabs that I'll need. On the back side, they're bent over, which is really good. You know, I'll be drilling holes in it. And then I took a, uh, you know, just a regular uh, wood screw. One of these, uh, a wood screw like this silver one in this box. Sometimes a longer one would be better, but you know, you can use a corkscrew or whatever. I just use one of these. I've used these in the past. Normally I use a longer one, but I don't quite have a longer one all of a sudden. And I screwed it down through the center right there. Then I'm going to reheat the can, and then uh, I'll be grabbing a hold of that, that screw with the vice grips and pulling the entire thing out. Once it gets hot enough again, so let's see how that's going to go. 
Well, she came right out. Once it got hot enough, the old vice grips on that screw just pulled it right out. Remember now, it's good if you plan to use a screw instead of a corkscrew, <clears throat> you got to have really coarse threads, you know, real fine threads. Probably wouldn't hold as well. Anyway, right now what I did was I filled this thing up with uh, lacquer thinner. And I'm going to let that sit and soak for a while. I want to kind of clean it out a little bit. It doesn't have a whole lot in it, as you can see. It wasn't a whole lot of that stuff, but you know, whatever's in there, I'd like to try to get it out as much as possible. So after it's soaked for, you know, half an hour to an hour, I'll take a toothbrush and go down there and scrub it all around, clean it best I can. What comes out, comes out, and that'll be the end of it. I'm not going to spend a whole much uh, more time on it. It'll be nice and clean after soaking. I'll just cover it with this, this little cloth right here, and that'll keep it from evaporating. Okay, next step coming up. Well, we're finally down to the meat and potatoes here on this uh, capacitor can. That cleaned up pretty good. There's a little bit way down in there at the, you know, on the other on the other side of the top. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it in there. It's not that big a deal. The rest of it's nice and clean though. It cleaned up real nice. No no black crap. None of that. It'll be fine. The first step we're going to have to do is uh, get this screw out of this thing and throw this away. And I'm going to try to keep this black disc. I'm going to use it as support on the back of this one. So when we stick them all inside the can, you know, I have a double layer there. It'll be a lot stronger. And uh, you'll see how that plays out here in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get that screw out and get this thing rocking and rolling. All right, screw's out. Now I'm going to go ahead and nip off some of these, these two metal things or what's holding the... Uh, they're just little metal foil things similar to this right here. That's all that sticks through okay we're going to kind of hack those off a little bit a little bit more flush than i think i would be able to just lift that right off when that's done let me get down here okay all right let's see now it should push right off and it does look at that oh god i tell you stuff is so easy people all right now i'm going to take some alcohol i'm going to take the old brush and i'm going to clean this up and i am going to clean this up real good now we have some moving parts here I do not like this okay see how those tabs are moving let's see, let's see get a little more focus on this here there we go yeah you can see how they move that's no good okay I, I might have an idea though on how to fix that because I want those things to be a lot more stable than they are <laughs> I could probably get away with it like this but I really don't want it like that so let's get them cleaned up and then we'll come back well, alcohol wasn't quite doing the trick uh, the way I wanted it, this 91% isopropyl. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of uh, WD-40. That always, that's the old standby. When everything else fails, go to the WD-40. And I think that might go ahead and clean it up the rest of the way. We'll see here in a minute. All right, that worked great. The old WD-40 cleaned them both, and then I went back over them with alcohol to remove the WD-40. And the reason I wanted that WD-40 completely off there is because we're now going to take some JB Quick. And I'm going to smear it around and underneath these tabs that stick out the other side. I'm going to get them nice and smeary on there. And then we're going to put a little bit, you know, on this one too, right in here, in this area. Then we're going to turn this thing over. We're going to press it against this one and hold it for about four or five minutes. And that will, believe it or not, glue it in place. Well, there we go. The glue is applied. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this around. This will be the, uh, the you know, the curved side is going to be the in, or the concave side, I guess it is, would be in. We'll go like that. Now I'm just going to hold that together for about four or five minutes until it dries. That's what I like about this uh, uh, JB Quick. Four or five minutes, and she's good to go. Well, it's only been about 10 minutes and already you can see that the uh, the thing is completely glued and completely dry and I put a little bit down through the hole in the center down in there too I wanted to have as much good gluing as I could get and this thing will now when I when, once I get the capacitors uh, the replacement capacitors in there this thing will fit down there like that and then the ring will fit down on top of there like that and then we will crimp the sides again make it look exactly like it was I'll tell you what, this has turned out to be quite a bit of work. I, I don't, I'm not so sure I'd like to make a steady diet of this. 
Well, here's our replacement 200 microfarad capacitors. Uh, these are <clears throat> rated at 250 volts. These are actually 220. And uh, what I did was I connected both negatives together. As you can see, I soldered, let me get this a little further back here. I soldered this negative wire to that negative wire, and then I tapped off of it with this black wire. And we run this black wire, it's going to come out and come out underneath the chassis. And I need it this long, or, you know, fairly long, because I found a really neat, convenient grounding point, because the negative on these things has to be grounded, as you know. And then, uh, the, uh, the positives, I just left one sticking out right here that'll go down. You know, I've got to drill holes in this for this stuff to go through. But one will go down through there. And then the other one was a little bit too short. So I went ahead and soldered a piece of wire on right here to make it a little bit longer. And that's just 28 gauge solid <clears throat> uh, wire. And then what I'm going to do is put this uh, red heat shrink up there. I'm going to shrink it down over the top of that whole mess right like that. And then add this uh, Teflon. I'll slide it up the wire till it's underneath there and I'll shrink the whole thing down. Let me show you what that looks like. Alright, here we go. Shrinking it down. And we'll go ahead and flip it over. Shrink it on the other side. You gotta shrink it on both sides, folks. Always shrink or shrink on both sides. Well, that's it. All right, now look, there's a million different ways to, you know, to set up your electrolytic capacitors before you stick them inside the can. Just do it the best way you know how or the best way you like. I could have put them side by side and put hooked them together with a, I don't know, I, don't, I think probably tape would have had to have been used. I don't think I could have used the wire ties like I did right here. I used the wire tie to hold the black grounding wire in place make it a little bit neater looking that's all all I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to run the wire I'm going to drill holes here run the wires down through it and then uh, solder them or at least wrap them around these two sets of contacts right here and the whole thing is going to slide up in the can like that just like that you'll see keep watching well that's that what we have is our one lead going down through this hole here I have the grounding lead going down through the center hole I drilled and then the center, a little focus here, the center of this cap comes out right here and they will both be soldered. I've got them wrapped around each of the connections as you can see. I'll go ahead and solder them in place and that leaves the holes free to hook up all the wires. And everything's nice and solid now. There's no wiggling around at the contacts. Now you can take some uh, you know, hot glue and put around there if you want. I try not to use hot glue very much if I can help it. In the very beginning I did, but you know, I got away from that. There's really no need. And the way this thing will go in is this will go in here. Oops, 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 oops. This will go here like so. The whole thing will fit right down in there like so. Just like that. And then this ring will go back on here and I'll position it away from the away from the uh, leads so it's sort of like this then I'll crimp over the edge all the way around and we'll have our cap uh, completely restuffed and we can go ahead and put it back in the chassis well there it is all finished and put back together uh, yeah, I'll tell you what it folding it over you don't get a real neat job out of that but there's not a whole lot you can do about it. that soft aluminum is just uh, makes it difficult to work with so let me get a little focus here best I can do on that it looks pretty good though you know from the side it looks all right because this will be down against the chassis you won't see it but I'll tell you what I am not a fan of doing it that way I can tell you that already I will not be doing it that way anymore and I'll tell you why because for the same reason I expressed earlier the next guy who you know it comes along maybe 20 30 40 50 years from now who knows We'll have a very tough time again opening that can it'll really be destroyed second time around trying to get that lip you know back up so i think from now on i'm just going to stick with cutting the cans open either putting a terminal strip under the chassis and mounting the electrolytics on the terminal strip or just cutting the can open and sealing it back together you have to cut them fairly low down in this area here so you can get a good clean you know cleaning you know, remove the top and 
when you take the guts out and everything, you want to be able to clean it real good down in here. And you also have to drill holes, and so you don't want to be, you know, be cutting it up here somewhere. That you'd have to be, have to reach all the way down to the bottom there, and it wouldn't be very good. You'd have to cut it about an inch above, about an inch above the seam here, or that top of that bend. And uh, then you go ahead and seal them up with that uh, exhaust manifold tape I was telling you about that chrome stuff. I think the next one on there's one more on the chassis that we have to re, you know re stuff, and I'll probably do it that way. I don't think I'll use a terminal strip. There's not a whole lot of room underneath the chassis to do it with. We'll, we'll do the next one uh, cut by cutting it open. I just reinstalled the can. I haven't hooked up any wires yet. And, you know, I twisted these little tabs here, this one and this one. And it's held in nice and tight. But I have a problem that I'm concerned about. That wire right there is too close to the chassis. You know, there's a lot of voltage in these... Uh, cans I don't need any arcing right here and you know you, some people would just bend it in toward the center and get it away from there no 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 that's not the way to do it guys what we're gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to desolder that wire and I'm gonna have to move it up further on the tab so it's away from the chassis this one's okay over here plenty of space but this one here is gonna have to have some more room okay and I still may have to you know bend the tab in a little bit but I'm gonna get it up and away from that so let me do that all right, I like that much better. It's now moved from the bottom. I moved it up to the top quite a ways. Look at the clearance we have there between the wire and the chassis. Okay, you always have to look for stuff like that. You don't need a whole bunch of arcing going on. Make sure that wherever you solder, if it's not supposed to be touching anything metal or the chassis, then make sure it's not happening. The only thing I have left to do now is take the wires that uh, were here. Let me back up this camera a little bit. I have the wires bunched together here that'll solder to this to the hole on this tab. These wires up here to include this resistor and this wire right here will solder to the holes on this tab. And that'll be done. That'll make the first uh, electrolytic capacitor uh, can restuffed. Now we have to do one more and it involves four different uh, capacitors of two different values. Two of one value and two of another. But we're not going to disturb any of this down here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the can open, change the guts out, put the uh, put the uh, uh, new capacitors in. We're going to drill a large hole right in the center here and feed all the wires down through to include the ground wire. Now we're going to solder the wire that goes here, the wire that goes here, the wire that goes here, and the wire that goes there. This would be C to A, B, C, and D. And you know we'll do that next time. And if we can get it all done next time. We'll go ahead and turn on this uh, TV and see what happens. I wanted to do it this time, only I, I don't know, I got carried away with that dumb old uh, capacitor restuff. I don't, like I said, I'm not going to do that again. I don't like that. And we, of course, have our ground wire, and it will go right here. Look at that. Is that convenient as can be? Look at there. An unused ground lug on a terminal strip. Give me a break. Look at that. All I got to do is solder that thing up. Matter of fact, when I bring the ground wire through on the next uh, can that we restuff, it's going to be hooked there to the same place, right there to that to that same lug with this solder right here, with this wire right here. Grounding point. Good to go. I mean, just very close. There was also another one over here I could have used. Unused grounding lug. It'll work out. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. I pulled your ear and long enough on this capacitor business. If you learned something, great. If you, if you already knew it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Until next time, this is John.